Hi, Chris. I'm very excited that you are here on Ledger Nation today. So maybe for, for this, the purposes of this video, because it's more of a beginner's level, let's talk about how do you buy an NFT? What do I need? Where do I look for an NFT? What do I need? Do I need ETH? Do I need another cryptocurrency? Uh, what wallets do I need? How do I do that? So in order to be prepared and uh, buy your NFT, to be able to at all buy an NFT, first of all, you have to have cryptocurrency. Usually you buy cryptocurrency from some of the biggest exchanges, uh, cryptocurrency exchanges like Coinbase or Binance. After that, when you have your crypto or usually the like maybe 95% of all trade on OpenSea, which is currently the biggest marketplace for NFTs in the world, 95% uh, of the trade is done in Ethereum. So basically you need to buy some Ethereum. There are also some small percentage of trade in Polygon, but that's uh, kind of neglectable. So when you buy your Ethereum, from an exchange, then you have to transfer it to your uh, digital wallet. Well, the most common wallet currently is called MetaMask, and it has uh, there are plenty of videos on YouTube how to install a MetaMask. But basically, it's like a, a Chrome extension, and you always always have it on your Chrome. Of course, you can have it on your phone as well. But in my opinion, it's more more secure to have it uh, on a desktop computer. And additionally, if you want to be uh, quite secure about your, of course, this is, how to say, never exactly 100% secure, but uh, the, the most secure at the moment is to also have um, a cold storage unit, which is like a small USB uh, that where you can store the private keys of the NFTs that you own. So this is like the basics of starting to be able to participate on the NFT market. And after that, you can make your accounts on OpenSea, for example, or other uh, NFT markets. And then you start selecting. So maybe I can uh, share my screen now. Sure. Great. So now we have the uh, OpenSea starting page. And here you can see, of course, different things you can do. Uh, so one of the things I would actually go as a starter to, to just have an idea what projects are inside and what are the most valuable projects. When you go to stats and rankings, uh, you're gonna see the different projects over here, like CryptoPunks is the biggest one. And of course you see volume. This is usually for the last 24 hours. Uh, you see how it changed 24 hours, seven days, the floor price, how many owners have this token, have this project, and how many items are in the project. So let me talk briefly about that. So the floor price is the lowest price of an NFT from this collection, right? Exactly, yes. Okay, so let's see, uh, Board A Yacht Club is the lowest price is 32 Ethereum. That's the cheapest I can get uh, an NFT from this collection. Yeah. Then the owners, uh, let's say again for the same collection are 5.8 thousand people and they have 10,000 uh, NFTs in this collection. So approximately two NFTs per person. Yeah. Okay. And um, let's go, let's say to the Board Ape Yacht Club <clears throat> as one of the prominent and second ranking at the moment. When you enter the collection, once again, you see uh, it's 10,000 items, uh, 5.8K uh, owners, floor price 32. And this is in the last 24 hours. 206 uh, Ethereum. And here becomes the, the ah, another uh, thing you can use over here before we continue downwards is when you click on owners, you're gonna see downwards. This is the graph of the sales in the last 90 days. And when you also click here all time, you're gonna see how the price and the sales moved here you can see uh, the whole project in general started uh, beginning of May. And um, 
you can see number of sales on the 2nd of May was 1,000 piece, uh, 700 pieces were sold on, on this date. Average price and volume. And you can see the average price was 0.78. If you compare to nowadays, 32. Congratulations to the people that bought in May. Yeah, and kept till nowadays. Yeah, but that's sure. the idea of the community. That's what actually keeps you inside. And here you can see like a statistic of the last sales on the market. For example, one hour ago, two hours ago, three, four, and so on, so forth. And you can see for what price this traded and also who sold it and who bought this item. Yeah. And um, uh, maybe something else, which is like a starter I want, I want to show is um, over here. Uh, maybe I should log out. So this is my wallet actually. Did I log out or no? Okay. So this is how you see uh, MetaMask without your wallet connected. And when I choose MetaMask over here, because I'm already logged into my MetaMask, I can automatically log into my account on OpenSea. Mm -hmm. And here you can see what kind of NFTs I currently have and um, let's say open this one I'm currently selling if anyone wants to buy <laughs> <you're welcome. laughs> um, so you can see over here the different um, parts so owned by you this is of course me how many people opened this NFT yeah, you can cancel listing or lower the price of, of your listing. You can see the different properties of this NFT. For example, the creators of NFT projects, they instill these different properties inside. Uh, and then according to the rarity of each property, you can see the level that I have of this NFT on itself. So it's 103 forum, 176 levels which is a, a little bit higher than the middle tier. And um, yeah, so here you see, when you see this minted with the baby card, this means I gave birth to this uh, NFT 24 days ago. Okay. Uh, and the minting, you usually do it on the website. Uh, Actually, let's go to the website because there's still some that were not minted and you can see how this whole process looks like. And there you go. So this is basically their website. Uh, and from the three tiers they have, legendary, as you can see, available only on OpenSea on the secondary market, but heroic and also relentless is all, uh, only on the secondary market. This means all of these have already been minted. Uh, and here is one that hasn't been minted fully. It's the heroic second tier, which currently costs 0.75 Ethereum. And they're so, 3,000. So, so yeah, let's, let's recap just a second. You're showing us an NFT collection that has basically three different NFT- Variations of the NFT. Variations, yeah. With so in each of them, there are more NFTs. And some of them have already been minted so minting is the creation of the nft as as um as someone that wants to own an nft you can either buy it on the secondary market so open c is a secondary market or you can mint it directly from the project's website now you're showing us the project's website and the heroic collection uh is not being fully minted yet so there are projects that are not uh, created yet. So NFT is not created yet. And now I can directly from this website create an NFT for, for myself. Exactly. And can we uh, talk about a little bit about gas prices? So I, I want to explain here two things. What is a gas price and why are we talking about gas prices all the time? Yeah. Why is it important? And the second thing that I would like to explain 
is how exactly does minting work? So first, gas prices. Gas prices, well, um, on the Ethereum blockchain, uh, if you would like to record uh, an, a new block of different transactions, this is done currently by the nodes, which are decentralized, kind of, you can imagine decentralized servers. Like I could have one at home uh, earlier when it was not so complicated to uh, participate in the blockchain uh, because of computational power. You could also do it on your computer. It was enough power on your computer. And anyone in the world can have uh, what is called the miner or a machine that is doing the computational work in order to um, uh, put a new block on the blockchain. And these people are rewarded a certain uh, Ethereum uh, when they record this block on the blockchain. And each of these blocks contains different amounts or a certain amount of transactions. And couple, each couple of seconds, a new block is recorded to the blockchain. And when uh, this is done, uh, the people recording it, they receive rewards and this stimulates them to continue do it, doing it, of course. And when they record this block, it is sent to all other servers so that the blockchain uh, records are distributed along the whole blockchain uh, servers in the whole world. And everybody has always the, um, uh, the current status of the blockchain. And uh, because you have certain amount of transactions, sometimes, especially because of NFT sales, when you sell 10,000 NFTs uh, and you open it like in one second, many people want to enter because they want to be the first. Uh, and that's what causes this so-called gas wars when you mint uh, the NFTs because uh, you actually have more transactions that are able to go into one block. And this is the time when, uh, if you want your transaction to be recorded earlier than the others, you simply have to pay a little bit more gas. And that's when the war starts. So, the, so this now transaction the, cost that you're paying basically is the gas fee? Yes. Uh, and now what is minting? Well, minting yes. is basically uh, because one NFT in um, is, is consists of a smart contract. Smart contract is something like a small software program, especially for these NFTs. And it gives different function to the NFT, like who is the owner, who is the buyer, uh, what is the address of the NFT, and currently uh, in which uh, wallet it is recorded or which wallet with private keys has the access to uh, work with this NFT. And... Um, when you mint an NFT, basically you record it on the Ethereum bl blockchain. You are the first that records it over there. And of course, for because um, recording an NFT or a smart contract on the Ethereum network, this is a transaction. And for this transaction, you also have to pay. So when you mint, you have one transaction cost that you have to pay the gas fee for the minting. And after that, you can see on Etherscan, this is a company that gives you uh, all the history of all transactions on Ethereum. So if you have the transaction number or the, the, the smart contract number, you can find who is the owner, when it was minted, from which wallet it went to, which wallet after that. And you can see the history of this NFT since the minting till nowadays. Okay, so on one side, we have gas fees for the minting, but then we also have gas fees for the secondary market. So when you, we buy directly uh, from OpenSea from the secondary market. So the gas fees are very, very important when we consider buying an NFT, especially on the Ethereum blockchain, because uh, they make an NFT more expensive than it originally looks like. I would like to add here something because uh, many people are surprised, especially when they have to buy and sell for the first time. Because when, let's say I want to sell something from this collection, like uh, I just put two of my uh, NFTs from the Impact Theory Founders Key collection for sale. And when I put 
one of N these NFTs for the first time from my wallet on the second to sell it on the secondary market, I also pay a gas fee because this uh, this puts my transaction on the on the blockchain basically. Yeah, yeah. Whenever you have an interaction with the blockchain, you have to pay, and there is a transaction to be recorded. There is a gas fee that is uh, demanded by the mm. blockchain. Okay, Chris. I would like to uh, come to an end right now because we spoke to about so many things uh, when it comes to NFTs. Thank you very much for that. You're welcome. I was, it was a pleasure to be here and to help anybody that wants to enter the space and get some uh, basic uh, information about uh, what are NFTs and how you can work with them.